Hello and welcome back to our second video here on uh, Theology of Mission as explained by David Bosch in his book Transforming Mission. In the first video we began by highlighting the significance of this publication and then we talked about the first part of Bosch's book where he makes the argument that in the New Testament we find not only one approach to missions, but rather we find a variety of models of mission. And so now for this video, uh, I want to present to you the second part of his book where Bosch presents uh, historical paradigms of mission with, with a similar idea that he's saying that in church history, there was not only one approach to mission, there were several approaches that developed over time under different circumstances. And then we end with part three, in which Bosch formulates a relevant missiology for today, for our time. So, for the historical paradigms of mission, we'll dive into history, uh, divided into different main sections. And those are, number one, the missionary paradigm of the Eastern Church, uh, of, the, of the first church, right, as it started in the uh, first a century after Christ and then uh, in, in the near ancient Near East and what today is like Syria and Turkey and those kind of countries, what became the, the Eastern Orthodox Church. And then we've got number two, the medieval Roman Catholic missionary paradigm. And number three, the missionary paradigm of the Protestant Reformation. And we end with number four, mission in the wake of the Enlightenment which for Bosch is describing the mission, approach to mission in the last 200 years or so. So beginning with the, the Eastern uh, Church, there is of course a lot that Bosch describes in, in, in the book. And so I will just keep it very simple here. Um, so uh, there's certain elements in the theology of mission of the Eastern Church that Bosch highlights. Uh, he, he emphasizes that it's a very a church-centered approach to mission where the Eastern Church uh, celebrates the, the liturgy uh, as they come together they, and that is their expression of mission. That at the core is their understanding of mission. Um, and so there's some, some strengths to that, of course, but uh, also some weaknesses. In particular, George informs us that uh, when he writes on page 210 in the 2011 edition of his book, as we shall see in the next chapter, the Roman Catholic or Western Church was almost always compromised to the state. The same was true of the Byzantine Church, meaning the Eastern Orthodox Church, only much more so. So one of the problems uh, with the Eastern Orthodox paradigm of mission is that it's uh, very much church-centered and that the church is very much connected to the state, meaning to, to the government uh, of that, uh, that area. And of course, that's, that's a danger that can compromise Christian witness, as we know from history. And uh, so similarly, a challenge for the Roman Catholic Church, as, as Bosch already has indicated in that quotation that I just uh, read. So here we have, of course, the, the church in Rome and the Pope, uh, the Roman Catholic Church being a very uh, hierarchical and powerful church that, especially in the Middle Ages in, in Europe, was not only the dominant cultural, but also the dominant political uh, force. So we have a similar challenge there uh, uh, that we also found in the Eastern Church. And uh, sometimes that association with political power also led to the execution of military power uh, as famously so or infamously so uh, in, in the Crusades, uh, right, where the Pope would encourage soldiers to march toward Jerusalem uh, to protect pilgrims and to also incorporate that particular piece of land as, as part of, of Christendom. Uh, so so highly problematic, of course, uh, from our point of view today. And uh, on the more positive side, one of the missionary forces that 
Porsche describes within the Roman Catholic Church is, is the monastic movement, right? That often it was uh, the, the different uh, monastic orders that would seek an alternative Christian lifestyle, right? Instead of seeking uh, power, they would commit, commit themselves to, to humility and obedience. And instead of seeking wealth, they committed themselves to, to voluntary power, poverty. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's that idea that there have always been streams within Christian structures that have sought to live a more authentic lifestyle, one that is more in line with the example of Jesus. And so then for the third paradigm that uh, Bosch has is, of course, the Protestant Reformation uh, that uh, began in the 16th century. And uh, there the missionary paradigm is very much centered on, on preaching and proclamation and uh, uh, proclaiming the gospel, especially the gospel as understood as a justification by faith gospel that leads to the salvation of people as they listen to it, uh, as they listen on to a message based on the word of God and they respond in faith and repentance, then people uh, can be saved, right? Very much uh, an idea that is uh, developed in, in verses like, like Romans 1.16 and, and generally throughout the book of Romans, which was a very influential book within the, the Protestant Reformation. Uh, now, in terms of a missionary paradigm, part of the challenge for the uh, Protestant church was that much of that proclamation only happened within certain geographical territories in Europe and where there was, generally speaking, very uh, limited vision to reach a people with the gospel uh, beyond certain European countries. And that changed uh, with uh, the Enlightenment paradigm and uh, with the more evangelical expressions of the faith that came later like in uh, uh, 1700s and then even more so in the 1800s and 1900s and here of course we have the example of William Carey uh, who is sometimes called the, the father of, of modern missions or of Protestant missions because he had the conviction that it was uh, based on Matthew 28 the, the duty of Christians to proclaim the gospel not only in their home country or not only within Christendom, but uh, all over the earth, like for example, in places like India. And so Kerry, of course, famously committed his life towards proclaiming the gospel uh, in India and uh, translating the Bible into different languages and uh, did, did a great amount of work. Um, again, the challenge one could say within that a uh, paradigm uh, was that sometimes missionaries would rely on on enlightenment uh, thinking right like a very rational type of approach to the faith and and they also would maybe rely not so much on uh political power as uh, the roman catholic church and the eastern orthodox church had done but they, they would often uh rely on economic uh power right and and uh act out of a position of uh, financial uh, superiority in a way when they came from a richer part of the world towards poorer parts of the world and kind of made, made things happen through the funds that they were able to raise in, in their home country. So that's, that's a challenge maybe for, for us as evangelical and Pentecostal missionaries that we need to think about. Um, anyway, uh, the main point of what Bosch is trying to say is that both in the Bible and in church history, there has been different approaches to missions. And in, in the historical paradigms of mission, there have been both strengths and weaknesses. And now that uh, for us living in the 21st century, the, the, the question is, how can we formulate a relevant missiology for our time? And so that is the uh, the third and last part of his book and also of my presentation here in this video. So when it comes to a mission paradigm for today, what Bosch is, is saying is that, uh, number one, there is an emergence of a postmodern paradigm. So already 
writing in 1991, uh, Bosch recognized that uh, we are entering a postmodern era and so that our approach to missions needs to respond to that challenge. Uh, and the time that we live in for Bosch is our, a time of testing. So we need to formulate mission in a time of testing, meaning we need to formulate a mission in a time where the very idea of mission is often under attack and not accepted by people anymore. Uh, then number three, he formulates elements of an emerging ecumenical missionary paradigm. And then number four, he acknowledges that uh, mission can happen in many modes. So we'll look into the, these points in a little bit more detail with some quotes from, from Bosch. So for, uh, regarding the emergence of a postmodern paradigm, he says, he talks about, uh, Bosch talks about the expansion of rationality, the resurgence of religion. So he says one of the ways that our times are different maybe to a couple of decades ago is that the narrow enlightenment perception of rationality has at long last been found to be an inadequate cornerstone on which to build one's life. And then he formulates what he calls a fiduciary framework where he says we now know that there are no brute facts but only interpreted facts. And that interpretation is conditioned by the scientist's plausibility structure, which is largely socially and culturally produced, right? And, and so that's also part of postmodern thinking, right? The, the idea that there are no general meta narratives that are true for all people at all times. Like it's, it's a questioning of objective truth. And that of course is, uh, is, is a challenge for us as Christians, because we do believe in objective truth and we do believe that there is a meta narrative which is applicable to all people at all times in all cultures at the same time acknowledging this framework can lead to a certain humility right that we recognize that we have our own cultural lenses for example uh, like the way we understand the gospel is also socially and culturally produced and influenced and then he has a section that he calls chastened optimism in which Bosch, Bosch says, like other elements of the enlightenment worldview, the belief that all problems are in principle solvable is also coming under increasing pressure. Then mission in a time of testing, he says, due to the catastrophes of the 20th century, like World War I and World War II, progress was revealed to be a false god. Uh, that's an opportunity for us as Christians, of course, because we can point people to a true God. But then he also says the church has lost its position of privilege. So that's something we need to be aware of. Uh, missions has to be re redefined, for example, redefined, for example, mission as partnership. He's writing here, of course, especially from a Western perspective, right? The Westerners cannot just assume that they are in charge of mission. And then he also says a paradigm shift always means both continuity and change both faithfulness to the past and boldness to engage the future, both constant, constancy and contingency, both tradition and transformation, uh, which is why it's important to be aware of these historical paradigms that he has explained in the previous section of his book. Right, so then for an emerging ecumenical missionary paradigm, uh, what uh, meaning, something that Christians in general can agree on, he, he sees different ways of describing mission. So uh, one way is to describe mission as the church with others, mission as Monsieur D, which is the main topic for this week, mission as mediating salvation, mission as the quest for justice, mission as evangelism, which I'm sure for us evangelicals and Pentecostals, that's uh, always been a major theme. But then there's also mission as contextualization, mission as liberation, Mission as inculturation, mission as common witness, mission as ministry by the whole people of God, mission as witness to people of other living faiths, mission as theology, mission as action and hope. So with all these possibilities, of course, the danger then is that if everything is mission, nothing is mission, uh, Bosch recognizes. So at the end of his book, he gives a summary statement where he says, mission is the participation of Christians in the liberating mission of Jesus 
wagering on a future that verifiable experience seems to belie. It is the good news of God's love incarnated in the witness of a community for the sake of the world.